G'day, I'm Peter Fritz, and I'm about to explain to you why I reckon a lot of you need to stop stuffing around and just go and get that new bloody Canon or Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, Fujifilm, or if you're really exotic like my mate Hugh, Sigma camera. And I'm going to explain this to you from the seat of my recently acquired nine-year-old Porsche Boxster. Because, well, I'm uh, fat, middle-aged, and I've got grey hair, so I think it's the perfect car to have this kind of conversation in. And towards the end, I'm going to explain to you also why I bought the Porsche. Hope you enjoy it. Hard not to smile. <laughs> How can I not smile? Beautiful day, awesome car, awesome sounds. <laughs> okay, so why did I decide to become one of those wankers who drives a Porsche? Well, it's very simple, really. I've been driving cars since I was about eight years old. I've always loved cars. I'm 54 now, and I started full-time work when I was 16. So I've been, I've been busting my ass full-time for many, many decades. And I've always wanted a really good sports car. Now I've had two MX-5s. I had the original MX-5, and uh, I had the ND MX-5. Both brilliant cars, absolutely brilliant cars but I've always had a secret hankering for a Porsche. Now, as some of you will know, I rented a 911 back in April, and it was astonishingly good, but not good enough for the price, in my opinion. I didn't think it was worth 330,000 bucks, but I did say, ooh, that's potholy. I did say that I reckon that I could get 90% of the fun for 30% of the price, and so that's exactly what I've done. I've bought myself a Porsche Boxster 981, last of the flat sixes in the base models because you can't get a flat six in a base model boxster anymore and um you know it cost me 80 grand versus 330 grand so i fulfilled my mission of getting myself a proper decent sports car something i've always wanted i've been working my ass off for many years i've been completely broke twice, I've been less than broke once, 140,000 in debt with no assets to speak of. I've dug myself out of the hole, with the help of my wife I have to say, and I'm now in a position where I could afford to, if I sold enough things, pay cash for the car that I always wanted. So that's what I did. I sold, 30, I sold 35 things including my MX-5, my motorbike and a whole bunch of other things, camera gear, and here I am. So that's it, in a nutshell. I've always wanted it. I could finally afford it. I'm getting old. I figured I deserved it. Bob's your uncle. The funny thing is, and I've discovered this more and more often as I get older, is that when you strive towards something that's, you know, difficult to reach, that's uh, usually when it's a material possession of some kind, something that you've poured over articles and read specs about, and watch videos about, all this kind of thing. Whether it's a car, a camera, or a home theater system, a boat, a jet ski, a light aircraft, whatever it is. When you finally get that thing, nothing really changes. You don't feel any different. None of your other problems go away, or none of your problems go away. Unless you bought something to solve a problem, then that's different. Uh, but if it's a consumer um, luxury item, then you know none of your problems change and none of the annoyances in your life disappear. Everything else remains the same. All that changes is that now instead of having X, you have Y. Instead of having an MX-5 in my garage, I now have a Porsche in my garage. 
but it still requires all the same attention. It still requires fuel and oil and maintenance and, and washing and, you know, it needs the bird shit scraped off it. Well, not scraped off it, but, you know, it needs all of the same effort to maintain it. But it's a case of, I guess, diminishing returns. The older you get, the more expensive the toys become or the more expensive the, um, the assets are that you acquire, whether it's an investment property or something else, the less of an emotional impact it has on you. I mean, I recently bought an investment property that is the most expensive property I've ever bought. And yet, I didn't even go to see it. I still haven't gone to see it, and I've had it for 18 months. Um, you know, I used a respected advisor that I've relied upon for many, many years, Michael Yardney here in Australia, top investment advisor, and I let him do all the legwork. I relied upon his advice. I took his advice seriously, and I went with it. And to this day, I still haven't visited that property, and I feel nothing for owning it is simply a means to an end. It's a way to accumulate equity and to ultimately help fund our retirement, mine and my wife's retirement. So it's just a tool. I feel nothing for it. Whereas my first investment property was very exciting. I wanted to look at it over and over again and I wanted to you know, do things to it, make it better and all that kind of stuff and pour over financial statements and everything. You know, it was very exciting to have my first investment property but now after doing half a dozen of them it it's just it's a nothing burger I don't feel anything so I guess my message here is you know you really should strive for the things that you want especially later in life because you really don't know when it's all going to be over life is incredibly short and it could be a whole lot shorter than you think you just don't know especially with all of the uncertainty in the world right now who knows what's going to happen in the next six to eighteen months who knows so you know if you really have always wanted a really nice camera, you know, and you can afford it, go and get it. If you need to sell a few things, sell a few things, you know. There are no gold stars at the end. If you've really wanted a Porsche all your life, like I have, well then find a way to do it. Sell what you need to. Um, don't cause yourself additional stress in getting it. I mean, I paid cash for this, so there's no stress involved. There's no loans to pay. Um, you know, if I need to sell it, I can sell it. But. As my dad always says, you know, you've got to be good to yourself because you just don't know when it's going to be over. But I guess the overriding message is don't expect it to change your life because it probably won't. But it will make your life just that little bit sweeter. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me again. I know this is not a landscape photography video this time, but, you know, being an old bloke, well, 54 years old, you know that I often like to talk about stuff that relates to you know, being this old, being in midlife. Uh, I've been writing about it for many, many years. Um, and sometimes I like to talk about it as well. So I'll see you again in a couple of weeks or less. Who knows? We'll see. Bye for now. Oh, and just one more thing before you go. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you want to watch some other videos of mine, then just have a look over here. YouTube's picked them out for you already. All right. See you in the next one.